Praise God. <clears throat> Welcome. I'm glad you could all be here today. Come on in, have a seat. We got a big crowd at the almost more people at the door than in the in the pews here. There we are. Praise God. That's no, okay. There we are. I figured it's a small congregation. We might as well wait for our neighbors and brothers and sisters and things like that. So praise God. Praise God. Well, my name is Tom Hendrickson, and I'm filling in, obviously, today as Father Carl's in Houston, I think. I, Houston. It seems like it might be warmer and wetter than here, which could be hard to imagine. It seemed fairly damp this morning to me. <clears throat> I love the low country. I'm not sure the low country loves me, though. I've lived here for 15, 16 years, 15 years, and, and I have these little allergies. So I'm not sick. I'm, not, I'm totally fine, but I... <clears throat> It just, it just is right up in here. You, some of you may know about that sort of thing yourselves. Well, praise God. Here we are to worship our Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Amen. I invite us to stand. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you. No secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Our prayer for the colic for this morning. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. <clears throat> you who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. <clears throat> They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. The word of the Lord. Reading today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision, by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by absorbing the law of command, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. 
And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple of the Lord. In him you also are built, being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> some of you may be familiar with, uh, I'm checking some of the age groups here, yes, the Hatfields and McCoys. Does that ring a bell? Us and them, you know, the people that would have a feud for generations upon generations. You may even be in families that experience such things as that. I pray not. But I, being in pastoral care, I know enough about family dynamics in our modern world to know that things can be just like the Hatfields and McCoys. Well, this is not a new phenomenon in, in the modern world. It's been going on since forever. There's always been an us, a we and us, and a they and them. Okay? And, and what we have, you, remember, you might remember the, uh, St. Paul speaking in one of his letters when he's talking to the, to the Greeks, and they say, well, in Athens, and they say, well, what is this babbler talking about? You see, Greeks had, had an us and them. There were, everybody that was Greek was cool. They were the good people. Uh, everybody else was, was them, somebody else, okay? Well, at, even the Jews had the same thing. Did not God call Abraham specifically? And he said, you're going, to be a, you're going to be part of we and us, and there's going to be everybody else. There's going to be the chosen people, and then there's going to be everybody else. Well, the same thing carried through. It carried on and on. And so that's where we are. That's the situation that Paul is talking about here in this letter. There was this division, this hostility. There was a wall in Jericho, in, in Jericho, in Jerusalem, at the temple, that said to, to all Gentiles, do not enter here or you will face the consequences, meaning they'd get killed. I mean, that's a, that's a wall of hostility. You cross that line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. That's a wall of hostility. And, Jesus, and, and Paul is saying Jesus has broken down that wall of hostility. He says these natural boundaries, whether you're from Europe, or South America, or Asia, or Africa, these natural boundaries are set aside. They are not the dividing wall any longer. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Instead of being disadvantaged, they bring different gifts and talents and skills and points of view to enrich the body of Christ. And that's what, that's what he was about. That's what the, the, the gospel message is, that there is now this peace. <clears throat> the, the spiritual us and them, as, as spoken about in John's gospel, does a fabulous job of it in John's gospel, is the people who believe in Jesus Christ and everybody else. So there's us, believers in Jesus Christ, and those who don't believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not talking about the Presbyterians or the Baptists. They believe in Jesus, too. They just emphasize different aspects of the faith, okay? So I'm not getting into that. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what, how does it go? Do you confess, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved? So no matter what denomination you are, if you say that, you're saved. And we're, I'm good with that. I've got a broad net. <laughs> I think we ought to obey and follow the gospel, the Bible, the morality, all of that, the traditional, all of that, yes. But I have a broad net for people with different gifts and talents to come in and be part of, of the body. Because I think that's what Jesus set out to do. So how did, we, how did we get into this situation? Well, it's very simple. Our first parents had one rule to obey. We all remember this. 
early Genesis. Don't eat of this apple, right? One little thing. We don't know what kind of fruit it really was. Just don't. One thing, don't do it. Because if you do, you're going to die. Of course, they had no idea what that meant. If you're, if you're living eternally, what does it mean to die? So they, they didn't know. You don't know. You, we always don't know what we don't know, correct? So they didn't know. And so they hear this story that they're going to they're gonna be like God if they eat this fruit. Well, maybe being like God is a good thing. I mean, he's wonderful, isn't he? He takes care of us. Maybe being like him would be a good thing. They wanted to learn. They wanted to grow. Sounds like good things. You could really do a spin on that, couldn't you? And you, I, We could have a whole marketing plan rolled out here. Oh, let's be like God. Let's grow. Let's learn. All these different things. Wonderful. Well, they unfortunately did learn. They, they, they learned what rebellion and death look like. They learned what exile and, and, and estrangement from God look like. They learned a great deal. And as a result, we know a great deal. Some of us might know more than we care to know. I know I have pictures in my head I just wish I didn't have anymore. But after a number of years, you see things you'd rather not see. And that's just the way it is. They learn these things. And as they learn these things, they incurred a penalty. And their penalty was death. Because God had said, you will die. And that's what happened. And that's what we have on us here and now. One definition I heard oh, 35 years ago, which, which really sounds good. We often think of sin as all the, the symptoms of the sin. You know, the, the, the things we do that, that break a commandment. I'll grant you, that's, that's, that's sinful enough. But sin is using our will, our will, making that choice to do something contrary to God's will. Contrary to God's will. We use our will that God gave us to do something contrary to God's will. God said, don't eat the fruit. They said, let's eat the fruit. Contrary to God's will. That's sin. St. Paul also says, anything done without from, that's not from faith is sin. So those are some pretty big definitions. So it's not just taking the pencil uh, when you were six years old uh, off your mother's desk. That's, that's not what it is. It's, it's a little bit more serious than that. Well, the good news is, of course, that Jesus paid the debt. That's the gospel story. He came and he paid the debt. His life, death, resurrection, it's all there. He made a way for us to have fellowship with the Father. And we just praise God for that. He fulfilled the, wall, the law. He tore down that wall. Remember how the curtain was torn and the centurion, surely this is the Son of God. All those stories, all those stories. That's what happened. And he made peace between people. And he's talking, St. Paul, a Jew, and you've heard his, in, in, you've read in, in his letters, how he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and surpassing all others of his own age. What a great Jew he was. He was really, man, he was the superstar. And he says, and now he's out hanging out with Gentiles and sinners and all sorts of crazy people. So he broke down all those walls. You know the story in Acts chapter 10 about St. Paul going to Cornelia's house. Walls are breaking. Walls were breaking. That, that wall of hostility was, was being demolished. Praise God for that. And he's, he's, he wants to make one people. He wants to make this people that, as I said before, are, are us who believe in Jesus Christ as the only Son of God. Our Savior. That Christ, our Savior. That might be a good name for a church. What do you think? Yeah, well, that works. Good. So, so that's what he's done. And so now we are fellow citizens. Fellow citizens. Heirs. Part of God's household. Wow. I don't know about you, but that's fantastic good news to a wretch like me. 
That, that is good news. That's the good news. Somebody wants to know what the good news is? We're part of God's household. Amen. Amen. I just love that. But so what's the purpose of all this? Why did, why did he do that? What did he do that for? He wanted to build a new structure based on himself. Based on his relationship to his father, God Almighty. And this community is not, is not the radical individual that, that our Western world supports. This is not the, the hero of, of the West go, going out independent, totally self-sufficient. This is not it. This is a community. This is a family. This is a structure that desperately needs each other. We come together to worship God our Father. That's our purpose here today, doing this. You come here to worship God. If the message is okay, praise God. At least you heard some scripture, praise God. I, I like reading all the scriptures. I like reading all of them. When I was a rector in, in Epiphany in Utahville, we read all the scriptures all the time. And I said, that way, if the sermon's lousy, at least you heard God's word. What could I tell you? That was the way, it, that's the way I approached it. And I love our liturgy for that reason because we restate what we believe. We say what we believe every week. After a while, it sinks in. I think that's a good thing. Praise God. So this community, this church body that we need, is not just Church of Our Savior, praise God, but it's all the other little churches around too because they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So we are part of a citywide, if you will, an island-wide church group that is all trying to serve the Lord. I think that's great. It's all about Jesus. He's the cornerstone. If you're going to build a house, you know, you got to get that first survey point right in the right place. You got to turn that one angle to get to the next corner. And if the surveyor messes up, I'm from New York in case you hadn't figured that out yet. It'd be a forget about it. Forget about it. You're going to be, you're off on the wrong, the wrong angle. So that's... The cornerstone is important. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. The prophets, the apostles, all speak to Jesus. And that's, that's where we go. And, and I love the apostles and, and the early, early saints that, that came. They lived out this life. They made it concrete and real. We can read the stories of the early saints. We can see all this stuff. We can read Paul's letters. We have all this information. Tremendous amount of information. So we can, we can build our lives on what they did. And this church, as he says, this church that's being built is, is the, the holy temple. We are being built into the holy temple of God Almighty. God is here with us, living with us, in us, and through us. Praise God for that. I just think that that's, that's super... Remember in, in John chapter 4, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman? You've heard that story before. I'm looking for a couple of nods of the head and we wake. Okay, good. Okay, good. Got a couple. Good. So, so he said, you know, he, he was having this conversation with her. And, and Jesus, bless his heart, I tell you, he, he never answers a straight question. You ask him a question, you know you're going to get some, some different answer. Right? She says something. She's asking something about where we're going to worship. And he says, oh, no, you, don't worry about that. It's not going to be in Jerusalem. It's not going to be here. You're going to worship in spirit and truth. What's that supposed to mean, Jesus? Yeah, that, that's, that's where, that was the kind of answer he would give to people. But he was saying, it's going to be in me, me, Jesus. It's going to be in Jesus that the center of worship is going to be. It's not going to be in a building any longer. It's going to be in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what he said. Remember when Jesus was, was arguing or talking about the, with the Pharisees and his, his, uh, his disciples came up and said, look at this beautiful building, Herod's temple, 43, 46 years to build a magnificent structure. Uh, 
oh, what a beautiful building. And Jesus says, tear this down and I'll rebuild it in three days. They laugh at him. There's a crazy man. It took all these years to build this. You, you're not, that's not going to happen. He was talking about his body, right? Worship is not going to be centered in the temple in Jerusalem. This is a paraphrase translation, okay? It's not going to be centered there. It's going to be centered in my person. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the person of Jesus Christ is God. We are to worship God. And that's what he was saying. So praise God. So our calling is clear. Our calling, what we are supposed to do, what we're supposed to do is clear. We're, we're supposed to be this dwelling place for God. We're to be, have that kind of love shared among us, have that kind of, of, of exuberance towards people, that kind of worship of him. That's what we're to be. And we're to live into the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And you all know this. And I, love the, I love the fact that when they translated it into English, they put the first three words, one syllable, the second three words, two syllables, and the third three words, three syllables. That helps a fella like me. We're to have love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I, I like that, that they translated it that way. I know they did it for me, so I, I, I appreciate that. But, but that's what we are to live that life. That's, not, that's supposed to be our natural reaction. I don't know about your natural reactions, but when I'm driving, this afternoon I'm going to drive from here, beautiful Seabrook Island, John's Island, all this gorgeous stuff. I'm going to drive up through, across the Ace Basin, which is gorgeous, through the town of Beaufort, and then back down to Hilton Head Island, which is another gorgeous barrier island. But I am pretty sure somebody else is going to be on the road. And I don't always exude that love, joy, and peace that patience, kindness, and goodness with the other drivers. <clears throat> Mia culpa, yes. I, 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 they just don't drive as, as good as I do, you know? But that's what we're called to be. That's what we're called to be. That's what the Lord wants us to be. That's why he went to the cross, so we could be crucified ourselves, and his life could live in us. That's what it's about. We are to be transformed. My, my life verse is Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it goes something like, in view of God's mercies, offer yourselves a living sacrifice to God, for this is pleasing in his sight. And be transformed. And that word transformed is metamorphous. Like, like a, before a butterfly flies. It has that, that cocoon, that, that, that insect, that crusty looking thing. I forget the name of it exactly, but there's a scientific name. It breaks apart and then the butterfly falls, flies away. Well, we're in that, we're kind of in that, somewhere in that cocoon stage now. And we're going to break out and be transformed into the image of God. Where, where the natural reaction for us will be the fruit of the Spirit. We will naturally have love, naturally have patience. That will be our go-to because it'll be Jesus living in us, his life in us, coming out into the world. And that's, that's what we're about. We're supposed to be beatitude people. You all know the beatitudes, or you know they're in Matthew chapter 5. Go read them. The, the, the blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are the peacemakers. All the blessed. We're to be those people. That's what we're supposed to do. That's our job description. So that's our purpose. And we are to take this message of reconciliation, this that there is peace with God, that we can have a relationship with the Lord, an eternal relationship, and we can do this. And we're not going to do it perfectly. 
because I love what, what, it, what it says in, in, in our readings. God's power is chiefly in showing mercy. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Right? What we deserve, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want justice. Justice gets me dead. I, I don't want justice. I want mercy from our colic this morning. I want mercy. That's what we get. And praise God for that. But we can take this message out to the world, a message of love and forgiveness. Praise God. Now, let me just give a word of encouragement. That might sound like a tall order. Go out and be beatitude people and produce the fruit of the Spirit right now. Go! Well, that might sound harsh, and it is. The only way it can happen is because God is at work in us to will and to act, to make it happen. God wants that for you. He wants that for you. He knows your situation. He knows every in and out. He wants that for you. He knows all the reasons. His heart is full of compassion. He loves you with an everlasting love. God wants you to be those people. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that your power is shown in your mercy towards us sinners. We bless you. Continue, Lord, your work in and through us, Lord, for our need is indeed great. We pray all this in Jesus' magnificent and powerful name. Amen. 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 I invite us to stand. I think we ought to stand for reaffirming our, our, our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us say together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, as spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may sit, sit or kneel or however you normally like to pray. For the peace of the world and for all well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, for Foley, our Archbishop, and Mark, our Bishop, for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, and any other adversity, Lord, have mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, I don't know how you're all allowed to do it now, but at least wave and say good morning. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Praise God. You may be seated. Quite a system we have up here. We do have gluten-free wafers. Do we need those this morning? Okay. I invite us to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of life and light. You made us in your image and called us to a new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. 
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. If anyone's picked a cup up in the back, you have it in your hand, we will consecrate that at the same time. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify these gifts by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your body, for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask also that you would sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all thin things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us, once for all, upon the cross. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now what I understand is there's bread only up here, bread that I will intent over here. Is that, I, if that's not correct, okay, I'm getting a thumbs up. Come forward. The body of Christ in
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen.